let us talk about advanced climatic classifications. People have actually thought about climate classifications for a long time. It actually started 500 years BC. Parmenides in ancient Greece classified three principal climate regions. The frigid zone of excessive cold, the temperate zone, and the torrid zone of excessive heat. So the definition of the temperate zone actually goes back a long time. Okay. In 150 BC, Hipparchus went a step further. He actually included information on the calculated day length for particular locations based on the solar angle on the spherical Earth's surface. According to this classification, the zones were renamed climata, a word referring to slope, which is the inclination of the noon sun at a point on Earth. So the word climate also goes back many, many, many years. Okay, but it's only, you know, it took a long time before the climate classifications became more advanced. Okay, and that's Vladimir Köppen in 1870 introduced the term climatic classification and proposed a classification scheme that was later featured and modified by Rudolf Geiger. Okay. Rudolf Geiger also pioneered the science of microclimatology. And microclimatology looks at the climate differences and on time scales of hundreds of meters to kilometers on very, very small scales. Okay, so for example, if you have a little hill, dependent on which side of the hill you are, you can have significantly different climates on these small scales. Or imagine you are near a lake, you know, on relatively small scales, you can have totally different climatic conditions. And that's a very fascinating field to study. Okay, it's, it's highly relevant in this era of anthropogenic uh, global warming. So the, the Köppen system okay, is based on temperature and precipitation data. So that's the importance here. It's not only temperature, it, it also includes precipitation because we know that precipitation is a major control on uh, life forms on Earth. Okay, it's the most widely used system, okay, and it has sim simple and strong correspondence to natural vegetation zones, you know, and soil types and soil characteristics. Okay, these are all linked. Okay, and I will inter introduce you to uh, to other similar schemes at the end of this at the end of this part. The Köppen system has five main climatic groups. A is called, uh, the tropical zone is called A, the arid zone is called B, the mesothermal or mid-latitude zone is called C, the mid-latitude cold or microthermal zone is called D, and polar zone is called E. And later, an additional group, H for highland, was added to account for the extreme climatic variation in mountain regions. Okay, so let's have a look at that at that Köppen-Geiger classification system in a little bit more detail. Okay, you don't need to really learn all the details, but just want you to 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 grasp a little bit the the key parts of it. Okay, so how did Köppen uh, define different climatic zones? 
Again, okay, there are some first order divisions which are repeated here. So we use the uh, capitals A, B, C, D, E, and H to define different climatic zones. They're called here tropical, dry, mesothermal, microthermal, polar, and highland, and defined on temperature characteristics. Okay? In this example here. For example, tropical is defined by the coolest months exceeding 18 degrees Celsius. Okay, that's how you define. You just have temperature data and you look at temperature data and any region where the coolest month stays warmer than 18 degrees Celsius you call tropical. Okay, Some of these are have further subdivisions like the subtype by, uh, B, the dry zones, and dry is not defined on in terms of temperature, is the lack of rainfall. Okay, And the B is, is, is subdivided into the true desert and into a zone which is semi-arid, so which can have a little bit of rainfall, but it's essentially mostly arid. And arid means low humidity or dry, Okay, called steppe. Okay. And then the tundra, we have, okay, uh, we have the, sorry, the polar regions are also subdivided into two classes, ice cap or tundra, okay, also based on temperatures, and ice cap is defined by perpetual frost, which means all the time temperatures below zero. Okay, and that, this is how you can define based on thresholds, and precipitation data, you get these uh, subdivisions. Okay? And indeed, you need to know what arid means and you need to know what humid means. Okay, now what I recommend what you do is actually write you, these terms into a little book, into a diary with explanations, and that's what you need to learn. It's your little dictionary of, of scientific words. Okay? In this classification system, the tree line separates the subarctic from polar climates, okay, either in terms of latitudes, but also in terms of altitude. You know, if you go up a mountain, it gets colder, okay, and you come into a zone where you trees can no longer grow. Okay, and that's what we call the tree line and it subdivides, uh, it separates the subarctic from the polar climates. Okay, and there's a further subdivisions. You know, you now get, want to be a little bit more specific, and there are further subdivisions, and this is just shown here in this table, further subdivisions, and just have a little look. So you have these lowercase um, subdivisions called A, B, C, D, or F, or M, or S, or W, these type of things here. But have a look, what are the criteria? Some are based on temperature thresholds. Warmest months exceeding 22 degrees Celsius. Some are based on rainfall, constantly moist. This one, which has F, you know, which is called F. Some are called, uh, some are referring to monsoon which is a highly seasonal and strong rainfall, monsoon rain. Okay, Some are referring to summer dry season or winter dry season, called S or W. Okay, Some refer to fog, frequent fog conditions, okay, or infrequent fog conditions. So there are some further subdivisions. And at the end, you can collect all the data that you have and you can create a map. And I want to show you a map. So this is one map, okay, of an advanced climatic classification. And this is the popular Köppen Geiger classification system. And this shows you a map, okay? You can see a map. And for clarity, different colors are used, okay? Different colors are used. You can see the the main divisions A, B, C, D, E here, okay, and there is no no H in this one. Oh, here is an H, 
H in here, but it's not not marked here in this game. Anyway, okay, you can see difference. So if you look at that, okay, if you look at that scheme, you can actually see that it's a little bit more complex than just looking at a latitude-based scheme. So why is it more complex? You know, why is it more complex? Well, you can see that if this largely follows latitudes, but it's more complex because of two main reasons. One reason is the atmospheric circulation creates zones where there is a very strong rainfall, okay? And it creates other zones where it suppresses rainfall, where it's very dry. Okay, this is why you have why you have um, different bands of either dry or wet regions on Earth. The other main region, a reason why you get strong differences in climate on relatively small scale is the influence of mountains on the formation of rain and the suppression of the rain. In large mountain ranges, you have rainfall on one side and very dry climates on the other side. And you can see some examples here in where you have very strong variations of clim climatic zones, in particular here on the on the western side of South America, but also you can see here in you know in, in, in North America zones like that. Okay, and there are reasons, and we will talk about the reasons in more detail in later later lectures. Okay, let's look at a, at a, at a similar map. This is again Köppen Geiger classification, and just want to want to show you again. You can see different colors, and it's essentially the same map. But I just want to see you if if you see a map like this and you look at the classification, and then you should actually remember what you already learned in the first part of this uh, this lecture. You can see here in the main climates, zone A is actually called equatorial. Okay, it's an equatorial zone. Okay. And you have a an arid zone B. Okay. Arid zones means you know these are the the very dry zones. Okay. There are some zones which are, you know, based on precipitation more, some zones more based on the temperature. Okay, and that's the key. So it's based on scientific data and it takes into account for the different types of rainfall regions that you get. And also the seasonality is also included here. You know, in some regions you have a winter rainfall, in other regions you have a summer rainfall. And in, 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 in well, indeed, it influences the type of vegetation that you have in an area. That's essentially it. But I just want to want for completeness uh, look at look at some some uh, uh, other classification schemes that have been proposed in the past. But I highlight that they're all very similar because they're all based on temperature and uh, precipitation data. Okay. So one example is the Thornth weight classification scheme. It shows a little map here and different names for different regions uh, separating arid from humid regions or very humid regions. Okay, And this classification scheme is very similar to the one that we just discussed, but it's based on nine moisture and nine thermal regions. Okay, it's a little bit, it's, it's very similar. Okay, it's, it's, it's very similar. There's a very interesting one here, which is called the Holdrich classification system. Okay, it's called the Holdrich Life Zones Pyramid. Okay, but it's also based on temperatures and precipitation. I just want to want want to show you how this is this is composed. You have a you have a pyramid, okay, a pyramid, okay, and it has a base, okay, and the base is defined in terms of the 
how much precipitation you have. Okay, you have on one side very dry regions, which are called deserts, okay, and you have very humid regions, which are called rainforest. Okay, at the base of that, where you are at the warmest regions, it's here defined in terms of biotemperatures, which is sort of an adjusted air temperature, but essentially we're talking about the air temperature in, in, in an area. Okay? As you go up, you know, the horizontal axis again distinguishes between dry and wet regions. Left is dry, the right is wet, but you, in, you lower the temperature as you move up. Okay? And you end up at the tip of your pyramid is the, are the polar regions, okay? which are very, very cold and which have a relatively low uh, variance in, in pre precipitation. I think this scheme does not account for, for snowfall data, uh, snowfall information at all. Anyway, and you can see and you can find most names that we used before, you know, your moist forest, steppe, shrubland, tundra, desert, you know, you have that. Okay? It's also based on on uh, precipitation and temperature data. Another classification that I want to, to discuss is an interesting one, which is based on a genetic climatic classification. Genetic means where does the cause, it relates to the origin, okay, or arising from a common origin, the reason why you have a specific climate. And it all relates to atmospheric influences. Okay? The atmospheric influences, because it's the atmospheric influence that creates rainfall over land, okay, and that moves colder or warmer air masses over land. Okay? And this is one scheme here which shows you, you can see all these um, source air masses which have different names and you can see the arrows point to the direction of influence of that okay and the different um, air masses are specified according to dry or humid okay they are dry or humid or and cold or, uh, or warm Okay, these are the principal influences. Okay, how do you get dry conditions? You get dry conditions if you are away from uh, oceanic influences. Okay, so this, this is how you get dry conditions and you get wet conditions if you have an influence of, 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 of weather patterns in an area. And I like that system because I like systems which are based, which are... Uh, based on a, a course, you know, on, on the course of, 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 of a process. Okay. So, all right, so this is all, this is the, the end of part B of this lecture.